we've come out to a remote dark place in hopes of doing some astrophotography. The skies look great. They're forecasted to be clear. So the object we're going after tonight is located in the constellation Cygnus. Cygnus, which is Latin for the swan. About 1,500 light years from Earth is a big, beautiful nebula that we call Cygnus Loop. Because it's so enormous, you can't always fit it in the field of view, unless you have a very wide angle telescope, which is a shorter focal length. And that's what we're gonna be using tonight, a shorter focal length telescope, so we can fit in Cygnus Loop, all of it, in the field of view. It's 120 light years in diameter. To give you an idea of what that means, light travels at 186,000 miles per second, or approximately 300,000 kilometers per second. In one second, light can circle the diameter of the Earth seven and a half times in one second. This is 120 light years in diameter. I mean, I don't even know how to wrap my mind around that. It's big, and it was created by one supermassive star that went supernova. Come on, little buddy. You're just not gonna stop, are you? You're just not gonna stop, are you? A supernova, that occurs when a massive star that is in excess of 20 times the mass of our sun comes to the end of its life cycle and it begins to go through the death throes where it's burning through its nuclear fuel and it's no longer able to maintain that gravitational equilibrium. But when it starts to run out, that fuel, it collapses. And when it collapses in on itself like that, the gravitational forces are so great that the heat and pressure from the matter collapsing in and compressing in on itself results in a explosion. An explosion so magnificent that it sends shock waves reverberating throughout the entire universe. And in this particular case, it was a big star and it blew off its outer shells and created this incredible, beautiful object that we're gonna go after tonight. So why is a supernova so important to you and me? It's because human life depends on heavy elements. We can't live without zinc, chromium, magnesium, copper, iron. There's a number of heavy elements that we literally have to have in our bodies to survive. And those heavy elements are forged and only forged in the intense heat and explosive power of a supernova. Sometimes on these dry riverbeds, the sandstone that's left behind, you can find footprints of dinosaurs. I kid you not. About a year ago, Shadow and I did rock hounding where the dinosaur footprints are very visible. I made a video if you're interested in, in rock hounding or seeing the, the footprints. And it's pretty amazing. Dinosaur footprints. Clear as day. I'm not seeing any here that I can say with confidence are dinosaur footprints, but I do think I did find a few paw marks or things that might be something that uh, walk this way eons ago. Well, we may not have found any dinosaur footprints, but we found the next best thing. How about a relative? 
a distant relative of the dinosaur. A desert tortoise. Hi there, little buddy. I won't get any closer. I won't get any closer. You want to come out of your shell a little bit? I won't get any closer, I promise. You are a distant relative of a dinosaur, aren't you? You're a reptile, cold-blooded. Yeah. Yeah, you're all armored up with your great big shell. We'll leave you alone. We'll leave you alone, little buddy. We'll leave you alone. Well, <laughs> that was pretty cool. I run into those from time to time. We keep our distance. I don't let shadow get near them. It's very important to uh, stay away there. I don't know if they're an, I think they are an endangered species actually, in any event. You know, we don't want to make their life any more complicated than it already is. Well, we're set up, we're polar aligned, we're star aligned, we're on our target, and we're actively imaging Cygnus Loop. As I mentioned, we're going to be imaging tonight, and we are imaging tonight, with a shorter focal length. This is the Orion 350 millimeter quadruplet, a beautiful astrograph. Let me show you where we are so far on the computer. Here you can see Cygnus Loop with the Eastern Veil, the Western Veil, I may have those reversed, Pickney's Triangulum, and when this is fully developed and I've post-processed it, it'll bring out a lot more detail than what you're seeing now on the computer screen. But you can see that it's coming along very nicely. We have, so far, 30 stacked frames uh, for a total of 45 minutes of integrated exposure time. I'm taking 90 second exposures and I'm hoping to get a good at least three hours, if not more. So I think what we need to do for the next several hours is just to sit back and let the rig do its thing. And I'll process this in the morning, and we'll see what we got.